Well, good evening. It's lovely to welcome you again along to our Tuesday evening Bible study and prayer. And I trust, like me, you're just enjoying uh, Dr. Ferguson's exposition of John 13 through 17, that upper room discourse, uh, enjoying it so much. He's giving us insights into our Saviour, into all that he felt as, as, a, as a person, as a man, and yet how sovereignly he was conscious and in control of all that was unfolding. So I pray that it will again be a rich blessing to you under the grace of the Holy Spirit. Well, as we gather together this evening, once again, we open in our worship of God as we sing the lovely song, I am thine, O Lord, draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord. Let us turn to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Our loving Father, as we rejoice in the goodness that you've shown us through this day, so we gather together this evening, though in our many different places, yet one in spirit. Father, our minds race back a number of weeks ago to that Tuesday evening in the church when we were meeting together for that last time 
And Lord, what a precious time that was. And yet, even then, we were beginning to yearn and long for the days when we would be together again. Well, Father, we thank you that we are together in the power of your Spirit. We are united under the headship of Christ. We are indwelt by that same a spirit that makes us part of your one body. And so we come together this evening again to worship you, to sing your praise and to draw on the riches of your word, to be fed in our souls and nourished and helped in these days, to be strengthened, Lord, and Lord, to affirm that hope that we need in the face of the current circumstances. We pray, loving Father, that by the grace of your Holy Spirit, you would come and minister into all our lives. Lord, it could be with the passing of these weeks, uh, our spirits are, are down. It could be, Lord, we're feeling a pressure upon us. And Lord, the devil would want to rob us of our joy. But Father, we are told that we are to rejoice in the Lord and to do so always. We're told by the prophet Habakkuk that even if the, the, the barns are empty, we're to continue to rejoice in the Lord. So, Father, we come to rejoice in you, and we have every reason to do so. For we need only reflect upon that so great salvation that you have wrought for us in your Son, Jesus Christ. That, Father, you have brought us from the darkness of our sin into the light of his glorious gospel. You've given us a future, and you've given us a hope, and even now you've given us the grace of your Holy Spirit, he who speaks peace into our hearts. We pray that, Father, you would be glorified as we meet together and as we again sit under the teaching of your word and that these lives of ours may not only be moulded and shaped more into the likeness of Christ, but, Father, we may grow in our love and affection for our Lord Jesus, that we'll be able to echo the words of the hymn writer, My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. So bless us as we continue together and as we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we turn to read together in the Word of God the passage that Dr. Ferguson will be focusing on in just a few moments. And that's in John chapter 13. And we're reading from verse 31 through 38. John chapter 13, verse 31 through 38. This is the Word of God. When he was gone, that is Judas, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I am going you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Then Jesus answered, Will you really lay down your life for me? I tell you the truth, before the cock crows, you will disown me three times. We thank God for this reading in his own inspired and inerrant word. And before Dr. Ferguson uh, speaks to us again, let's join to sing together that another of John Newton's wonderful hymns, Amazing Grace. Mm -hmm. 